Just after I recorded my video yesterday, Elon Musk dropped a bit of a bombshell on a Twitter spaces dedicated to XAI. Plus Tesla produces the first production Cybertruck and they even have a hand sign for it. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. In honor of the first production Cybertruck, I have yet another variety of the Cybertruck tumbler. This is great, this is a really big one. Notice that it still fits in a cup holder. And of course, I've got a Back to the Future themed uh, Cybertruck t-shirt, which says, where we are going, we don't need paint. And there are other things on the merch store as well. Definitely check out the link in the description. Get on board the Cybertruck, you know, enjoyment. It's gonna be a great ride. I can't wait until the first ones actually come out into customers' hands. Hopefully within a couple of weeks, maybe maybe six weeks, something like that. I expect as per usual, the first ones will go to employees, but we should see them going into customers' hands relatively soon and there should be a delivery event. So that should all be a big to-do when it happens. And of course, if we look at this tweet from Tesla, you can see a lot of people were involved in making this. This of course is from Giga Texas. And there are a bunch of people, some of them are doing heart signs and things, but there are definitely people who are doing a, I think it's a left thumb, right finger sort of thing that makes a Cybertruck sort of silhouette, which is very cool. So I guess you might consider it the world's geekiest gang sign or something along those lines. So anyway, a huge congratulations to Tesla on that accomplishment. And there are a lot of Tesla Q and other people who are going to have to get a hat and start eating it soon, who said that this would never come to the public. It was vaporware. So I hope that those folks can at least admit when they are wrong. And on to the Elon Musk announcement that is yet another data point that leads me to very, very strongly believe that they are throwing out there, have thrown out the current architecture that full self-driving is being driven on and that they're instead using an end-to-end -end world model, which is being automatically generated via foundation model. And if none of those terms make any sense to you, I have an entire explainer video up here. I will also link it at the end of this and in the description, because I know sometimes the little corner boxes are hard to click. So anyway, I will list it there. It's like 30 something minutes long and I go into a lot of depth explaining all of that stuff. It turns out that was an unintentional part one of two. I, I made it as a video that was just supposed to be an explainer on its own, but then literally like one hour after I finished videoing that, Elon came on and talked about it on the Twitter spaces for XAI. I did not expect that in this context, but such is life. So I'm gonna play a bit of the Twitter spaces. This comes up around 43 minutes. The actual thing about Tesla comes around 44, but I wanna give a little context. Somebody asked about useful compute and human intelligence and all of that, and that's what sort of leads Elon to talk about Tesla. So let's take a listen to the useful compute per watt thing first. But if you've got 10 megawatts of GPUs, cannot currently uh, write a better novel than a good human. Um, that any good a human's using uh, roughly 10 watts of a uh, higher order uh, brain uh, power. So not, not counting the basic stuff to, you know, uh, operate your body. So, so there we got, we got a, a six order of magnitude difference. Um, that's a giant, that's really gigantic. Now, you, uh, part of the, you could, I think one, one could argue that two of those orders of magnitude are um, explained by the activation energy of uh, a transistor versus a synapse. Um, I could, could argue that account for two of those orders of magnitude, but th w what about the other four? Um, or the fact that even with six orders of magnitude, you still cannot beat the, 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 a, a smart human writing a novel. So, and, um, and, and what, also today when you ask um, the most advanced AI's uh, technical questions, like if you try to say like how to design a better rocket engine or complex questions about uh, electrochemistry to make a, a build a better battery, uh, you just get nonsense. So. That's not, not very helpful. Um, so I think there's some, some we're really missing the mark uh, in the way that things are currently being done by many orders of magnitude. Um, it's, it's being heavily, I mean, it's, being, it's basically AGI is being brute forced um, and still actually not succeeding. So the way that Elon is leading up to the Tesla part of this, which comes up just next, is he's talking about the fact that what we're doing to create general intelligence or not general intelligence, whatever you consider large language models and full self-driving as well, because that's what he's gonna get into, is just what he's calling a brute force method. In other words, it's rather complex and you're just throwing an immense amount of energy in terms of compute cycles into overcoming these barriers and there has to be a better way. That's kind of what he's talking about here. And one of his benchmarks for XAI, and I think this is really cool, is that you'll know when this thing is really smart, when it actually helps to solve a physics, 
chemistry, biology, you know, some question like that, something that's been fundamentally bothering people for a long time. The big one in my mind has always been like, how do you combine gravity and quantum mechanics? You've got one that's a field theory and one that's a quantum theory, and the quantum mechanics works for three out of the four major forces. Gravity is the big exception, and how do you meld these things? How do you subsume them under what is probably another type of theory that's actually more elegant and describes everything. At least that's my personal opinion about that. I'm a big fan of simplicity and elegance. I was talking to Dr. Scott Walter today, and I was talking about Einstein's general relativity equations, Maxwell's equations, even Newton's equations. Those are actually really, really simple, you know, overall. But even something like Maxwell or Einstein's GR equations are very, very complicated, gnarly things when you get into actually calculating them, but they're really beautiful on the surface. They're just these very elegant equations and they read very simply and everything. So I'm personally a big fan of that and I've always felt like quantum mechanics was just really, really nasty. <laughs> it's got a lot of math and a lot of complexity to it. And my hope would be that there would be something that kind of combines general relativity and quantum mechanics into one more elegant theory that makes more sense. Maybe that won't happen, you know, that's just my personal belief, obviously, at this point. But how cool would it be if you could have something that at this point would be an artificial general intelligence if it's able to come up with a theory like this that no human has ever done, it would be a super intelligent being. But if we could get a, an AI that could actually solve a fundamental problem like this, that would be number one, proof that we have AGI, but number two, it would be something that would actually help humanity out. I know you might be like, who cares if you actually solve that? But there are a lot of consequences when you start to solve this. The entire computer world, like everything I'm recording this on, my phone, the you know, even the microphone, all of this stuff depends on discoveries that were made in the early 20th century about quantum mechanics and then the engineers that took that and and turned it into something practical, but it changed the world. Quantum mechanics makes the world fundamentally different than what we had previously, and creating things like computers and stuff couldn't have happened without quantum mechanics. So what I'm saying is if this super theory was developed next year, in the next hundred years after that, you might start to see incredible advancements based on that theory. So it starts off as a fundamental discovery, and it's just cool because we know something we didn't know before, but there are practical consequences to it as time goes on, and it makes the world better in general. So with the idea of simplicity, artificial super intelligence or general intelligence as the backdrop, let's now turn to what Elon immediately after this said about Tesla. If I look at the experience with Tesla, what we're discovering over time is that we, we actually overcomplicated the problem. I, I can't speak to in too much detail about what, what Tesla's figured out, but except to say that in broad terms, the answer was much simpler than we thought. We thought. We were too dumb to realize how simple the answer was. But uh, you know, over time, we, we get a bit less dumb. So I think that's what we'll probably find out with AGI as well. So I love Elon's humbleness in the face of all of this. He says, over time, I hope we'll get less dumb. And he, he's basically admitting that they were dumb in the way that they were approaching the, the general intelligence that's necessary to drive an automobile and that there is a simpler solution. And that solution is something he can't talk about so much, but we can piece together that data point along with some other ones from the CVPR talks in particular and start to figure out what that is. And lest you say that, oh, look at the dumb engineers at Tesla. No, they're not. They're incredibly bright people. The problem is, I love this analogy. I don't know if I came up with it myself or somebody else told me this ages and ages ago, but whatever it is. Imagine you're in a forest. You're trying to find your way out of a forest on a pitch black moonless night. You don't have a flashlight. You're just bumping into trees, walking in circles, things like that. You don't know where you're going. But once you actually figure it out, or if somebody actually starts calling to you from the edge of the forest or something, once you figure out the path, it's like obvious in retrospect. It's like, oh, that's how I was supposed to do it. But there's kind of no way to get to that point without making these mistakes. If we want to turn back to the general relativity combined with quantum mechanics things, one of the possible mistakes, I don't know if it's true or not, is M theory or superstring theory 
is an amazing, beautiful mathematical idea. It does have some really nasty math that you have to do, but the idea of it is quite elegant and beautiful. And that is perhaps a stumble that people are going down the wrong direction. And they've spent entire careers since the 1980s trying to work on this sort of a thing. And it might all be a failure, but that's not really a failure. It's another step in the direction of discovering something because you have to go the wrong way a lot of times first before you discover the right way. And if M theory or super string theory turns out to be right, then these people spent their lives very, very well. But even if it turns out to be wrong, it's still valuable because it adds to the knowledge that everyone has. So likewise with self-driving, we can dial this all the way back to the 80s and 90s when people thought that they had solutions to it. They're like, oh, this isn't gonna be that hard. We'll make this work, no big deal. They were working on a lot of different things with you know hard-coded stuff and a lot of different sensors and all sorts of hand-tweaked models of every little possible thing you could see. And most lately in the last couple of years, we've seen things like what Andre Karpathy talked about a while back. I'll put these videos up here if you want to look at it, like the Hydronet with all the heads and the trunk and the vision system and all of these different pieces cobbled together and some software 1.0 hard-coded sort of things that are put in as well. There's a lot of stuff that Tesla did and it sounds like what they did was they went a lot of directions in many different ways, bumping into trees and things like that. And on the way, they were complexifying and complexifying and complexifying the whole thing. But what apparently they've done is that they've gone, wait a second, this is so much simpler than we thought. And what that simpler solution would be would be an end-to-end -end foundation model that can train itself without the need for humans to do labeling or any of that kind of stuff. So again, definitely watch my other video if that doesn't make sense to you because I talk at length about that. But if what I'm speculating here is correct, this means that Tesla could have made a major step change. Again, we as the drivers have not seen this yet, but internally they may have something phenomenal at this point. And that may be one of the reasons why Elon has been like, version 12 is not going to be beta anymore. He's like that confident. It's the sort of thing where every time they would do something, they would get this very fast acceleration of development and then it would flatten acceleration of development flatten. You get the classic S curve where you get a really, really fast takeoff and then it flattens out. And the goal has always been to get the place where it flattens out to be higher than human, the average human driver. And they're getting pretty close to that, but there are a lot of edge cases which drive a lot of people crazy, including me. And what happens is when you get to that flattening out part, what you have to do a lot of times is not just tweak things and you know adjust stuff and try to incrementally increase it a little bit, but you oftentimes have to throw out the old architecture and start over again and they may have done a radical version of that and created an end-to-end -end network that takes in photons and outputs a control thing and this will work again for Optimus as well as for the cars but if they have one massive network that's just an end-to-end -end network that could be the solution to suddenly raising the headroom on their ability so that they're way 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 above human ability by the time they reach the flattening out part of this curve and will even this curve eventually flatten out I would say yes it probably will I mean, look at a human driver. There's only so good a human can get over time, right? So we we even have an S curve. When you're a, a beginning driver, you suck down here and then you accelerate in your ability and you get much, much better and then you personally flatten out. But even the best human being has only a certain level that they can drive at. So even a superhuman driving vehicle will eventually reach some sort of plateau, but that plateau could be a thousand times or more safer than a human driver at which point it really doesn't matter that much anymore, right? You can keep tweaking it and keep tweaking it. But it sounds like what Tesla has done is they have developed something that again is much, much simpler than what they had before. And that screams to me and George Hotz as well, by the way. So somebody way smarter than me says this as well, but an end-to-end -end solution is the way to go. It's the simplest thing to do. The problem is it is pernicious, it's really difficult to do if you don't have the right data and the right architecture already in place. In other words, if you just start from a gigantic network that has randomized weights in it and you begin training it, it could take the age of the universe for it to train because it just doesn't have enough information. It's a sparse reward system. It doesn't understand things well enough. So all of the steps that Tesla has been taking, even though you might say, well, they were you know, barking up the wrong tree or bumping into the wrong tree in the dark or something. All of those steps have been necessary because they've created number one, the knowledge of what doesn't work. And that's actually very, very important. But number two, it's already got a whole bunch of these systems with some weights that really understand the world already. And what you can do is you can sort of backfill that 
that stuff into the new world model. And you can use all of the training data you've got, the 3D reconstructions that they're able to create now, all of that sort of stuff. They can pile all of the things that they've done already into this new model. And so instead of starting at absolutely zero and not knowing anything, it already knows a lot when it's born, when this system is born. And Elon actually talks about growing AIs. It's very interesting. So he thinks of it too, like a developing baby. And actually we could consider that analogy even further. If you consider like, you know, me or you, when we were born, we weren't born completely blank. Yeah, we were very blank, but we weren't completely blank. We had billions of years of evolutionary history behind us, which means that we already had an awful lot of stuff going for us when we started. And so if that analogy holds, this new world model system wouldn't have begun from a completely blank slate. It would have begun from the knowledge Tesla already has, and that knowledge is immense. They know so much about how to drive a car in a world in the real world at this point. It's just incredible. So you take the weights or you take the knowledge or you take the training system or you take the data or you take pieces of the architecture and you put this into the new world model and it already has, you know, evolutionary quote, evolutionary history behind it before it's ever born. But it sounds like Elon saying like, this is simple. This is a new architecture. It's simple. It's end to end. It's foundational. It can train on its own. It does not need labels. It can work on all of this stuff. It can generate its own information. It can generate its own understanding of the world, just like a human or an animal does. All of this means that if I am correct in my speculation that Tesla has made a fundamental change to their architecture and that fundamental change is going to be i think the one that is going to allow the car to actually drive under almost all circumstances at least as well as almost all human beings and probably eventually far better than any human being and i don't know about you but that is a future to get very very excited about all right i hope you enjoyed this rather geeky video and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking if you did please do like it because that's how youtube's algorithm it's, it's AI, knows how to serve it to other people, and consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. I do work hard for all of you. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my Twitter subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting me in any way that you can. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cell, all of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget that we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a car, a power wall, a solar roof, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.